Have you ever felt overstressed and overwhelmed? Have you ever felt that you are at a point where life has you in a chokehold and you are suffocating? If you add one more thing to your schedule, you are going to fall out. As a matter of fact, you may feel that way right now. Well, today we are starting a brand new series called More Margin right here on Summer Heat. I'm coming in. Does it ever seem like life is one big podcast? Here's what I mean by this. It seems like so many people are starting their own podcast. It seems like every actor, every actress, every singer, every rap artist, politicians, authors, comedians, athletes, everyone is starting a podcast. Preachers, our best friends, our family members, everyone is starting a podcast. And then when we look at our news feed and social media, then we see these reels or these video clips, these teasers that are saying, you got to check out my podcast. You got to check out my podcast. And you may even have a friend that says, you need to check out that podcast. You need to check out that episode. I'm telling you, it is going to speak to your life. And he said, yeah, I'm going to check it out. Or you saw the teaser, it grabbed your attention. You say, yeah, I'm going to check it out. But you never get a chance to check it out. It just seems like your life is just so full. You don't even know if you can handle anything else. Nevertheless, a podcast. And then you have your friend that is saying, have you checked out my podcast yet? Have you checked out my podcast? And he's like, I'm going to check it out next week. I think I have a little more time. And next week comes and what happens? There's so many things that are happening that we don't have time to check out a podcast. But it's not just about podcasts, isn't it? It's all of life. Sometimes we tell ourselves that, yeah, I'm going to be focused and I'm going to set aside time. I'm going back to the gym. I'm going to start cooking more at home or I'm going to work on that project. I need to step it up with my painting or I need to get back on the court. I'm getting rusty. I need to just get back on the court with the fellas and play some ball. And we keep saying these, but for some reason, we just can't get around to it. And then guilt starts to set in, doesn't it? Then it feels like, okay, well, if it was a priority, you would get it done. And maybe somebody tell us this. If you really wanted to get it done, you would get it done because we make time for the things that we want, right? And it's not that we don't want to do it. It's not that the desire isn't there. But you know what's lacking? Margin. Because I found out in life that margin overrides desire. That there are some things that we really want to do. We really want to spend more time with our family. We really want to be healthier. We really want to focus on our studies and our education. We really want to focus on that project. But even though we have the desire, we lack the margin. Here's what margin is. Margin is the space between our limit and our load. Margin is a space between our limit and our load, right? And so when we think of margin, you probably think of, of a book. This is the book I wrote a few years ago called Lost in Love. You can pick it up, Amazon.com. <laughs> but anyway, but when you look on my book, like every other book, you see that there's space in the margins, right? And the reason why a book is um, easy to read is because of the margin because of the space on both sides, as well as the top and the bottom margin as well. And then even when you look in between the lines, there is space, there's margin even in between the lines as well, right? And so because there's margin there, it's, it's, it's easy to see, it's easy to read. However, when you look at a book cover, a book cover tends to not have margin. As a matter of fact, the graphic art often on book covers is bleed to etch, right? Meaning that the graphic um, that's on the book cover, it goes from top to bottom and side to side, right? So there's no white space on the edges. There's no white space on the top or the bottom. Why? Because when it bleeds to edge, it looks more polished. It looks more professional, right? So we 
want margin on the inside, but when it comes to the cover, we don't want margin. We want it to bleed to the edge, right? And that's how it is with life as well. Now, it may look great on the book cover, but in life, our lives are bleeding to the edge. Like we take it straight to the edge and we don't have any margin. And the reason we don't have any margin because we live in a society that thrives on no margin, right? Because if, if, we, if we're hustling and we're grinding, what does it say? It said that I'm being professional. It said that I'm being polished, right? I'm, I'm part of team no sleep. I'm getting it done. And meanwhile, we are stressed out. We are burdened down and we don't even know if we can handle to take on the very things that we desire to do. And so here is how, how our life, our life looks like this. <laughs> like, like this is our life. It's just filled with just so much activity and so much stuff, right? And the thing is, they're, they're, they're all good stuff and there's stuff that we, you know, that we, that we have to do or, but, but we don't have time for anything else. So, so maybe we don't have time for, for rest. <laughs> when am I going to rest? When am I going to go on vacation? When, am, when am I going to sleep? Some part of team no sleep, right? Or we don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> exercise. When am I going to fit this in? Right? My, my, my life, my schedule is already overloaded. I, I don't, I don't, when am I going to fit this in? Right? Or maybe it's, it could be leisure, right? Like I don't, I don't, I don't have time. I don't, I don't have time to watch the game. I don't have time to play a game, but this is the truth, right? That, that, that what starts to happen is when we don't have margin, and we're burdened down, look what happens. Bones start to drop, right? And then there's the clock, isn't it? And the, basically the clock is saying, often our time is all over the place. So, so, so we're late everywhere, you know, we, we, you know, we show up late, we're, we're just never on time, and we miss deadlines, and have to pay late fees, and, and why? Because we, we, we don't have the margin. Here's a big one. Uh-oh. Time with the Lord. We, we, and this is just the truth. Many of us, because of the lack of margin, we're not spending time with our Heavenly Father, and we're not in Scripture. And it's not because we don't want to. It's not that we don't want to spend time with Him, but our life is just so crammed, and there's no margin. And so here is what we often say. I know exactly how to get margin. I know exactly, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take all of the things that are in my life, I'm gonna take all of the things that are on my calendar, and I'm just gonna go buck wild. I'm getting rid of this. I'm not doing that. You know, I'm not. You know, no, I ain't got time for my cell phone. You know, this is this gotta go. This gotta go. This gotta go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm clearing up space. You know, because I can't do everything. And now, look what happened. Voila, margin. <laughs> now I have space. So now I have the space. Now come on. I time to work. I can get that in. Now, okay, now I can get some rest. Listen, I wish it was that easy. But we all know that's not the case. Because we all know what's going to happen. We get gung-ho, and before you know it, after we do all that spring cleaning, now summer's coming to an end, and that bucket of life is filled up once again. And that has been your approach, and that has been my approach as well, too. I'm not playing. I'm clearing it out. I'm getting space. I'm getting margin. And here is why I believe it's difficult for us to get margin. Let me give you another illustration. Okay. Um, here I have three cups of water. It's really um, water and salt solution. So the first cup of water represents 
undersaturated, meaning that it has less salt than water. Uh, the second one represents saturated, meaning that it has salt, but it really cannot hold any more salt. It is really completely saturated. Um, this one represents um, oversaturation, and you can tell uh, because whenever a solution is oversaturated, um, whether it's salt or sugar, no more can dissolve, and so it just sort of settles at the bottom, right? And so margin, when it comes to how we address margin, tends to be like this, right? That when you look at the undersaturated cup and the saturated water, it looks pretty much about the same, right? And it's because, as I mentioned before, um, saturation of our lives is normal. Like that is the norm. Like many people that they are bleeding to the edge because of the fast paceness of society and because of technology that, that we are completely saturated, right? So the thing about it is whenever our life is saturated, in a sense, it can feel normal because that's what everybody does. And so when somebody makes a request of us to say, hey, um, I don't know what you're doing, but I would love for you to be part of the board of my new nonprofit organization. Or somebody says, hey, you know, I'm having a project and I would love for you to be a part of it. Or, you know, can you help me with this? Or can you help me with that? Or maybe there's something that we, you know, that we want to do, but we're not sure, you know, if we have the time Time, you know, should I take on more clients or should I, you know, spend more time with my family? I'm not sure. And so what we tend to do is we say, okay, well, you know what? I'll, uh, I'll just, uh, I'll just add a little bit. You know, it's not, it's not gonna kill me. You know, just but 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 here's the problem: we're adding something to a life that's already saturated, and even though it looks like it can hold more. It cannot hold more. So here's the thing, right? With people in our lives, the people that are in the cup with us, the people that are swimming in our waters, know how saturated our lives really are. Now from the outside, it looks normal. But the person that is swimming in it, like our spouse and our children, they know it's salty, don't they? This is why they say, well, you are always on your phone. You were never at home. You never spend time with us. Now, our friends, even some of our family members, like we just, we just look normal because they're not swimming in it. You know when people can tell? When our lives become oversaturated because now we can't hide it. So, so, so now our, our, our productivity starts to drop. Now we're not, we're not showing up for appointments. Now we're, we're, we seem disengaged. Now we're, now we're here, but we're not there. So, we, so we're here physically, but we're not there mentally. Right? Is it, 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 and so now the signs are starting to show. We, we're, we're so stressed out. We got to be rushed to the hospital. Why? Because now people are seeing the signs. But when people start to see the signs... It's not because we're saturated. It's because we're oversaturated. And here's the thing I found about trying to create margin. Trying to create margin is like trying to take salt out of a saturated solution. That is how it feels. And that is why it is so hard and so difficult. Because very often, we, we really don't know where to start. That yes, I, 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 I realize I have to spend more time at home, but the reality is, you gotta work, <laughs> I gotta work. We gotta get paid, like, like, I, like I can't, right? Like I, like I understand what y'all are saying and I gotta prioritize this, prioritize my spirituality, but you don't understand what comes like with my career, like what comes with my position, right? right? And it's, it's like, like where, where do I even start? But here's the thing, and here's a question we gotta ask ourselves. 
what is really driving us? Like, like think about that. Like, what is driving me to add more to a saturated schedule? Like, think about that. Like, 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 what, like, why am I taking on more hours? And my life is already saturated. Like, like, why, like why am I spending more time doing the project when my spouse already tells me I'm never home? And you know what's driving us? It's fear. Fear is what's driving us. Because we are afraid. What happens if we get left behind? Like what happens if we don't get the car? What happens if we don't get the house? Like what happens if we can't make the trip? What happens if you know, we, we, we can't make the party? Like we already missed the last two. Now, if we don't show for the third one, they're going to think that, oh, we don't like them anymore. You know, I mean, how is it going to look you know, if we have family coming from out of town and, you know, and the place isn't put together? We don't have furniture. It's the same old paint. And like, we're afraid. We're afraid of being rejected. We're afraid of falling behind. We're afraid that we're going to be the laughing stock in our industry. We're afraid of letting people down. Sometimes we're afraid of just saying no. And it is fear that is pushing us to the edge. It is fear because we are afraid. What if I don't achieve my goal? What if I don't get that thing I've always wanted? And at the expense of our family, at the expense of our peace, at the expense of our joy, we are allowing fear to bleed us to the edge. And we are stressed out, we are worn out, and we're depleted. But here's a key. The key thing is if we're going to have margin in our lives, we must replace fear with faith. We must replace fear with faith because here's, here's the truth. It all goes back to trusting God. Will I trust God? Will I trust God to live a life of margin and to just trust that God is going to step in? He's, he's going to be sovereign. He's going to show himself strong. He's going to make a way. It takes trusting God. And so before we dive into the scriptures, I'm going to help us during the series to get margin in two areas, our time and our treasures. I'm going to help us to start the journey of getting margin in our time and our treasures. Because here is what we're going to need in order to live a life that isn't saturated with stress, that isn't saturated with apathy that isn't saturated by spiritual immaturity, is going to take us getting white space in our calendar and green room in our budget. Like that? See what I did? We need to have white space so we can be at ease, and we need green room so we can breathe. We need white space in our calendar so that we can be at ease. I'm not ripping and running. I'm not, I'm doing the things that I need to do, but also the things that I want to do. But then I can breathe. There's, there's some room in our budget. There's, there's some financial wiggle room. And I want to help us to get there. So what we're going to do today, real quickly, is we're going to look at how much margin meant to God to the point of where he made sure that the nation of Israel had margin. Now, some of you may have remembered that we spent um, quite a while here at the bridge looking at the life of Joseph. As a matter of fact, I want to invite you to go back and to watch the Purpose Journey and Purpose Journey 2 series, especially if you're new here uh, to the bridge. But during the life of Joseph, that God raised up Joseph in Egypt and God used Joseph as a way to save the nation of Israel as a remnant who was really his 
his family. And because of the uh, famine at the time that, that, is, that the nation of Israel was able to live in Egypt and able to not only to survive, but then to thrive and to multiply. And God raised them up in Egypt as a nation, of course, with the intent of them going back to Canaan, going back to the promised land. And so the scripture says that there was a Pharaoh that rose up that did not know Joseph. And because he was um, um, intimidated by the growth and the multiplication of Israel, that he placed them under slavery. And so Israel ended up being um, slaves in Egypt for over four hundred years. Um, and so God had raised up Moses, as many of us know, to bring uh, the nation of Israel out of Egypt's slavery and to begin this journey back to the promised land. And God's uh, purpose was not only for Israel to be his people, but for Israel to be a nation, that Israel was actually uh, um, um, uh, his people and a nation. And in order to establish them as a nation, God gave them very Various laws, but but in the laws there was three of them in particular that allowed the nation of Israel to have margin. The first one was the law of the Sabbath. Look what it says in Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 through 11. It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work, you or your sons or your daughter or your male or your female servant, uh, or your cattle, or your sojourner who stays with you. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy, right? And so, as you many of us know, that, that we always encourage the, the, uh, the, the practice of a Sabbath. So having a day that is set aside for, for rest and replenishment and and, and recreation. Um, and the reason why it's so important to have a Sabbath, because the Sabbath is a reminder that you were created not just for work, but created for worship. That you weren't created not just for work, but for, for worship. And so understand that for the Israelites that were part of the camp at this time, that they were born and raised in slavery. So all they knew was work. Like that was their identity. Like, look, you you were made to work. You were made to be a slave. And so God had to reprogram that mindset. And the way that he did it was by establishing the Sabbath. I said, look, I know you used to work in 24 seven. However, I'm setting this as a law that the last day of the week, you are to set that aside so that you can have rest, so that you can be replenished, so that you can be reminded that God created you not just for the things that you do, but he created you so that you can worship and to honor him. So you know what this meant? That meant that whenever uh, the sun went down um, on Friday evening, uh, that would be equivalent for us, meaning that there was no work. So if there was something you forgot to do, I forgot to, to run to the grocery store, you know, I forgot to put the cattle, <laughs> you know, in the farm, that look, it just had to wait until the next day. Why? Because there needed to be margin. You needed to get rest. So this was built into the rhythm of Israel. Like, look, if you forgot to gather manna before the sun set, then you just have to wait until the Sabbath was over. And so it was important that they maintain the Sabbath. Why? Because it was an opportunity for them to trust the Lord. Well, how are we going to get things done? If we're working six days a week, and that seven day we're resting, like how, how are we gonna make moves? How are we gonna make sure that money's being made? And how are we gonna make sure that spreadsheets and who's gonna make sure that things are closed down? Guess what? You gotta trust God. And then there's another passage where God said, that I want you to keep the Sabbath so that you may know that I am the Lord, your sanctifier, so that you can know that I'm the Lord that sanctifies you, that sets you apart for my glory. And so we see here that even in the Israelite calendar, there was margin. 
There was margin in their time. And you had to keep the Sabbath. And you had to choose faith over fear. Here's the second one. The second one was the law of tithing. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 10, it says, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. So it says, And test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it overflows. And during this time, the Israelite priests and all of them as a nation that they had lost sight of, 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 um, of, of, of tithing that, that after they had returned um, to Jerusalem, after the Babylonian captivity, that there were some systems that needed to be reestablished. And one of them was the system of tithing. Let me tell you what tithing was. Tithing was at least 10% of what you earned. So that was your income. That was your crops. And there was a portion that was set aside so that that can be given to the temple to take care of the needs of the temple and to take care of those who were poor and the widows and the less fortunate, right? So, so, so this was something that was placed in a box. It was placed in a jar. It was set aside. Why? So that the nation could have margin. And God said, listen, if, if, if you don't think this thing is real, test me now in this. And you will see that I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you down the blessing that you won't have room to receive. Now, God says, typically, I, I want you testing me, but test me now in this. Why? Because it was a step of faith. They were to choose faith over fear. But we set aside this money. What if I get an unexpected bill? And what I got to go dip into it? No, that was set aside for the Lord. And given to the temple. Why? So that Israel can have, what's the word? Margin. Here's a third law. A third law was the law of gleaning. Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 22 says, When you reap the harvest of your land, moreover, you shall not reap to the very corners of your field, nor gather the gleaning of your harvest. You are to leave them for the needy and the alien. I am the Lord your God. And in Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 19 says, When you reap your harvest in your field and forget a sheaf in the field, you are not to go back to get it. It shall belong to the stranger, the orphan, and to the widow, in order that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. So here's what God was saying. God was saying that, look, that whenever you reap your harvest, don't reap it all the way to the edge. In other words, don't, don't bleed this thing to the edge. But what I want you to do is I want you to establish margin, okay? And I want you to establish some margin so that you leave some of what the crops that are growing. In other words, you, you, you don't gather all of it. You leave some of it and you leave some of it for those who are in the margins. You leave margin for those who are in the margins. So, so, so those who are poor, the widow, sorry, the widow, the, you know, those who are, who are less fortunate, leave it for them so that if they need something to eat, if they're hungry, they can come to your field and get free food. And not only that. But when you are gleaning your harvest and just say you forget, you know, some crops, just say, you know, there's some wheat left over, you know, you forget to gather some strawberries, you know, you forget some of the mangoes. Don't go back and get them. Leave them. Now, now, listen, some people probably thinking like, hold on, you mean to tell me you want me to leave money on the field? You don't understand. I can glean all my field and I can make money. Do you, do you know what I, you know I can do with that bump of crop? And I'm supposed to just leave it. And then on top of that, look, mistakes happen. So you mean to tell me if I forget to get some of the sheaves, if I forget to get some of the cucumber and, 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 and cabbage, I can't go back and say my bad. I, I, I got to leave it. And God said, yes. Why? For those who are in the margins. For those who cannot afford. For the widow, for the poor. And God said, if you do this, I will take care of you. 
But will you trust me? Will you have faith? Will you have margin? And trust me to not dip in the margin. Will you trust me to not bleed your life all the way to the edge? Because you're afraid. If I don't, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to get the promotion. If I don't, I don't know what people won't say. They may say, hey, he, 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 he's slacking. He need to step up his game. And, and then here's the truth, right, about this. You know, very often in, in, in marriage, we, we, tend to, uh, we tend to marry the opposite, don't we? It's the opposite of track, right? And one of the things that attracted you to your husband or your wife was the fact that, look, that they are strong in areas you're weak in, right? And you're strong in areas that maybe they're weak in. And sometimes you have one person that, look, they are Mr. or Miss Margin. But then you have the other person who's Mr. or Mrs. Oversaturation. It's like, look, no, you need to go out there. And you need, you need to work some more hours. You're like, you need to be out there. You need to be grinding. You need to get some more clients. Like, look, we, we can't just be just sitting around here, you know, on a Sabbath day. Like, we need to be out. We need to be networking. I mean, come on. I know we can't afford to go on the trip, but everybody's going. And how's that going to look if we're the only couple that's not going? And I understand things are tight or whatever the case may be. Like, look, can we just do just this one time, just this one time, right? And so, so now... Very often, listen, we bleed to the edge so that we can have peace in the home. You don't want to buy it, but if you don't buy it, there's no peace. But then this is what happens. Because we can't afford it, then we don't get any peace later on. Because there's no margin. And always remember this. The higher the margin, the lower the stress level. But the lower the margin, the higher the stress level. And if we don't have any margin in our time and we don't have any margin in our treasures, we will go through life stressed out burdened down, burnt out because we don't choose faith over fear. So two questions we got to ask ourselves. First one is this. Will I trust God with my time? And listen, before I put my hands to my calendar, and start talking about, I'm not doing this anymore, and I'm sick of this. Well, no. Will I trust God with my time? Will I surrender my time to God? Will I do that? And will I surrender my treasures to God? Will I surrender my money, my resources? Will I surrender to God? And to trust God. To trust God with my time. And to trust God with my treasures. And here's what will happen. When we start to get margin, here's what comes with margin. Joy. Imagine you getting joy back in your life. Imagine you having real joy. Not fake joy. Because some of us got fake joy. How you doing? Oh! Awesome, amazing. How summer? Oh, amazing. I have the joy of the Lord. And behind closed doors, there's no joy. Imagine getting real joy back. And watch this. And imagine getting peace back in our lives. Like, what if we got peace back in our homes where we're not so stressed out in our homes that we're not arguing all the time and bickering all the time? Like, what if we can get back to the place where we can get peaceful rest again?
But we must choose faith over fear. Because that is the beginning of unsaturating our lives so that we can get some margin. White space to be at ease and green room to breathe. White space to be at ease and green room to breathe. Let's pray. Father God, we honor you. We thank you for being an amazing God. And Father God, after creating all of creation after six days, you rested. You created margin even in the Godhead. And Father God, we admit, God, that we've allowed fear to bleed us to the edge. And there's so many things that we're afraid of, where we're nervous and we don't know and how we, we don't want to risk it and we don't want to say yes and that we're afraid of disappointing people and we're afraid of being left behind and we're afraid that our children won't be able to stay on top of things. It's just so many fears that we have that drives us not only to the edge, but off the edge. And Father, we pray that over the next few weeks, Lord, lead us and guide us. Give us wisdom so that we can live a life that's not only pleasing to you, but a life where there's ease in our calendar and room in our budget. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey everybody, this is Carlita Earl and I serve as a member of the Bridge Worship Team. And at this time, we're going to transition to our offering portion of our worship experience. And we are so thankful for the resources that God gives us that we can worship him and advance his kingdom in the state of Maryland and our nation and around the world. And there are many ways that you can give here at the bridge. On your screen, there is a button. And if you click on that button, it will afford you the opportunity to give in that way, as well as visiting our Bridge app and visiting us online at thebridgedc.org. But no matter in what way you give, we are so thankful and honored that you get to partner with us to help us to love God, love others, find purpose, and make a difference. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to give and to worship you with our resources. And we pray that you will bless these offerings and these gifts, that it will continue to advance your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.